Chess is one of the oldest board games ever. It's been around for a long, long time. In today's video, I'm going to show you what is considered to be the most famous chess game in history. Let's go. With the white pieces, we have Paul Morphy. And with the black pieces, we have someone called the Duke Carl. Now, this game was played in 1858. And Paul Morphy was considered to be the first chess genius. Why? Well, in this game, you're going to see him occupy the center develop knights and bishops very quickly, and very importantly, prioritize activity over material. We're going to take a look at it. So, Paul Morphy opened up with pawn to e4, pawn to e5 was played in return, knight f3 attacking this pawn, pawn to d6 defending, this is called the Philidor defense as black, and after pawn to d4, you can play many things, nowadays knight d7 is played, you can technically play knight c6, which is also okay, there's the weird queen e7, but black played bishop g4. And after pawn takes, black thought, well, okay, if I take this pawn now, I'm going to lose that pawn after all of this. So black took, queen takes, pawn takes, and this is equal material. David, what is equal material? Equal material is when you have the same amount of points. So if you count how many points you have, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5, all of these, white is going to have a certain, the same amount of points that black has. Now, what was I saying at the beginning? At the beginning, I was saying that Paul was one of the first chess players to say, hey, look at this. This is an equal position because we have this equal, equal amount of points. But it's actually better for me because I have better activity. And that's what he said. He said, Bishop C4. Now, my pieces are more active than yours. Look at yours. All your pieces are in the back rank. My pieces are a little bit further away. So that's, as simple as it sounds, already a sign that Paul Morphy is slightly better in this position. And not only that, well, if you look at what Paul Morphy is doing in this position, pause your video if you want to, but Paul Morphy is threatening checkmate on f7. So if black were to play a silly move like a6, this would be the end of the game, checkmate. So black had to do something about that. Carl decided to play knight f6. Now, this queen unfortunately cannot jump over that knight. But Paul, Paul said, okay, I'm going to create a battery. I'm going to play queen b3. And um, when two long-range pieces are lined up in the same diagonal or a file or a rank, this is called a battery. So this queen and this bishop are working together, therefore a battery, against the f7 pawn. So this f7 pawn is attacked. Black said, okay, I don't want I don't I don't want to lose that pawn. For instance, if you play c6, you, you're losing that pawn. You can't take back. So queen e7 was played. And in this position, Paul Morphy developed knights, a knight, sorry. Um, and kind of wanted to jump to d5 and b5. So black said, I don't want any of that. I want to defend those two. And at the same time, I'm going to defend this b7 pawn, which, by the way, was attacked before, and Paul Morphy could have taken it. But Paul Morphy didn't like this, because after queen b4 check, you're forced to take that queen. And even though you won a pawn as white, you're not as happy as before, because before you could have developed a knight, uh, used, used activity of your pieces rather than material. Sure, this is good for white, and white is probably going to win this game. White has the bishop, white has an extra pawn. But Paul Morphy wanted more. Paul Morphy wanted to take out the knight, start occupying the center with the knight. And after c6, he even went as far as developing the last minor piece he had left, the bishop, which is a very good move. Now, bishop g5 is doing something extra, which is pinning the knight. You cannot move this knight anymore. If you move it anywhere, let's say this sad little move going back, you would lose your queen. But let's say knight h5 would do the same. Anywhere you move the knight, you would lose the queen. So that's not something black wants. In this position, black should have tried to do something about that and try to castle as soon as possible. But black played pawn to b5, which is the beginning of the end. Let's just say it this way. Um, white in this position, and many of you would think, oh, my bishop is attacked. Uh, this, this pawn is attacking my bishop. I have to move it away. Bishop d3, bishop e2. And uh, then after, after that, I can think of doing something else. But that's why Paul Morphy was such a genius. Paul Morphy said, okay, my bishop is attacked, but I don't have to move it away. In fact, I can sacrifice on b5. But Paul Morphy took with the knight, not with the bishop. This is another way of sacrificing, but it's less efficient because after you take with the knight, this is not check. And you want it to be check. So knight takes b5. You sacrifice the knight. If black doesn't take the knight, then that was a free pawn. So black has to take. And you're going to say, David, we just lost a point. We gave up a three-point knight. And we, in exchange, we got two pawns, which is worth two points. So this is bad. We're losing material. We're losing points. And you're right. We are losing points. 
but this is not the worst in fact it's not it's 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 good for us because we sacrificed one point of material and in exchange we get a king's a king hunt we start attacking the king over and over and over and as i said from now on it's going to be paul morphy attacking 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 and Carl defending, defending, defending. As, as, as funny as it sounds, that's the way it works now. So bishop takes b5, check. Paul sacrificed the knight for pawns, but after knight bd7 and longside castling, take a look at Paul Morphy's pieces. Look at this. They have lots of space. The rook is in the open file. The only piece that is not doing anything is the rook on h1, but have a look on that. Like, keep an eye on that. And if we look at black's pieces... Okay, this knight is pinned, this knight is pinned, this bishop cannot move, this rook is a little bit stuck in the corner, this rook is also stuck in the corner, this king cannot castle, this queen, in fact, even the queens you can compare, how many squares can this queen go to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many squ squares can this queen go to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you get the point. So... Every single piece white has, every single strong piece, meaning bishops and queens and rooks, is better than black's pieces. Maybe you can you can say say an exception for this rook, but we will, as I said, keep an eye on that rook. So rook d8 was played because rook takes d7 or bishop takes d7 are big threats. So rook d8 is one way Carl tried defending. But this is already too late, as I said. Rook takes d7. Once again, if you if you were not convinced about what Paul did before then this will convince you, because Paul sacrificed even more material, Black had to take, there's not much to be done, and now, finally, Paul Morphy has developed every single strong piece they had in their position, and once Paul Morphy does this, everything breaks down for Black, because Black is not in time. Look at Black's pieces, all pinned, all at the back, doing nothing. Look at White's pieces, sorry. Look at White's pieces, doing a lot, attacking, pinning, Incredible. Black tried queen e6, but it's 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 already game over. Bishop takes d7 check was played, and after knight takes d7, white to play and checkmate in two moves. Can you find it? And I will repeat: white to play and checkmate in two moves. How how did Paul Morphy finish this masterpiece? And how did Paul Morphy make himself immortal with this game? Which is the reason why this is one of the most famous games. Okay, I think you had enough time to pause or to think. In this position, queen b8 is the best move. In fact, this is checkmate in two moves, as I said. Many of you would, would have thought queen takes e6, because it's also check. But actually, after pawn takes, you, you don't have queens anymore. And all of a sudden, all your active pieces, they, they're still active, your bishop and your rook. But it's not as, bef as before, where all your pieces were ultra active. The only reason why Paul Morphy is trading one of the bishops is because after queen b8, forcing move... Knight takes b8, forcing move, there's nothing else. You have checkmate in one move, rook to d8. David, black has an extra queen. David, white is losing in points. Yes, but at the end of the day, Paul Murphy used all the activity and transformed it into a forced sequence that got him into this position, and this position is checkmate for black. You can't do anything, you can't avoid here this is the bishop you can't take the rook the bishop is defending it this is checkmate in, in, incredible game probably the game was already good because of the way paul morphy developed the pieces and knights and bishops and occupied the center and sacrificed material but the finish in my opinion i think this is the the, the ending of the game is what truly make made this game uh immortal and made this game the most famous game in, in chess history Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.